Once again, in today's Gospel reading, our Lord emphasizes the need to believe in Him, and He emphasizes that He's, you know, uh, does everything the Father reveals to Him. He's come from the Father, and so we need to believe in Him. And this means not just believing in Him, but everything that He teaches, including what He's going to teach about the Eucharist. So, faith in Christ. We cannot be cafeteria Catholics. A cafeteria Catholic is somebody who goes to a cafeteria. They're obviously just going to pick and choose what they want to eat. We can't have that approach to our faith. We must believe everything the Church officially teaches and has always taught. Now, I wanted to draw your attention to today's first reading also from the Acts of the Apostles. So it mentions that, um, you know, St. Stephen was killed. Uh, severe persecution of the Church begins. Uh, the, the followers of our Lord are scattered. And then talks about Philip, one of the Apostles. He goes to Samaria and he preaches to the crowds. He proclaimed the Messiah to them. The crowds, with one accord, listened eagerly to what was said by Philip, hearing and seeing the signs that he did for unclean spirits, crying with loud shrieks, came out of many who were possessed, and many others who were paralyzed or lame were cured. So there was great joy in that city. So Philip is preaching in Samaria, and, you know, often when we think of our Lord, we think of him individually healing individuals, such as a paralyzed man. And some of the apostles did that also. Now, it's not clear here, so it might be some speculation on my part, but it just seems that Philip was simply preaching. And because of his preaching, because of his holiness, because of the truthfulness of his message, the demons reacted and the demons were crying with loud shrieks and came out of many who were possessed, and also that many who were lame or paralyzed were cured simply at the preaching of Philip. Now, it's possible that they may have come to him individually and he cast out the demons or healed them. So the point I'm trying to make is the truth it's the truth that sets us free from demonic spirits. It's the truth that sets us free from our ailments also, or at least enables us to deal with our ailments. And I've read a little bit about, um, you know, uh, exorcisms and things like that. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I've read a little bit. And one of the things that is very noteworthy is that whenever an exorcist is going to perform an exorcism, one of the things that he has to do first is to ensure that the person who is possessed understands all the truths of our faith. Because once they understand the truths of our faith and they live those truths, it makes it so much easier for the exorcist to cast out the demons. And I have heard stories of individuals who were leading very sinful lives and when they converted and started praying, they were attacked by evil spirits because the evil spirits actually had a hold on them. But because they persevered in their prayer and they had others praying for them, eventually these evil spirits left them. So no exorcism was done. But the point is, when we have the truth, when we live the truth to its fullest, it's our best protection against evil. And in some cases, it may even bring about healing as we see the great saints. Now, today we celebrate the feast of St. Kateri Titekwitha. And some people might pronounce it differently, but uh, she's uh, both a Canadian saint and a saint in the U.S. I think in the U.S. they celebrate her feast in July, maybe July 14th. So uh, she actually died on April 17th in 1680, and she's an indigenous person, so she was a, a native to, to Canada. And at the age of 19, she became a Christian, and she, she wanted to remain a virgin. She wanted to dedicate her life to Christ. She wanted Christ to be her spouse. And many in her indigenous community um, were upset by this, took offense against this. And so she was kind of persecuted, treated badly. And so she fled to a Christian community 
uh, where, where there were Christian um, yeah, native uh, Indians there. And, and she was much more happy, much more at peace there. But when she was young, she had contracted chickenpox, which left horrible pot marks on her face, as well as causing her to be severely impaired in her eyesight, so she was almost practically blind. Nevertheless, she was very resourceful, a very good worker, and because of this, there were other Indian men who wanted to marry her, but she refused because she was dedicated to Christ. She undertook great penances for the conversion of her people, and she would wake up very early. I think five o'clock she would go and pray. There was this one tree where she had carved a, a cross in the tree and she would pray by the cross. And then when the church was open, she would go and pray in the church. Uh, she loved to attend mass and all these things. So uh, she was a very holy woman. She was declared a saint by Pope St. John Paul II. And what's, what I wanted to note about her is she had a lot of struggles. So her blindness, um, her chicken pox, sometimes she was che teased because of the way she looked. Uh, she was teased for being a Christian. But nevertheless, God helped her. She persevered, and she eventually became a great saint. She also undertook many penances, as I mentioned, for the conversion of her, of her people. But what, what is noteworthy in her life is that when she died, it was related that her face took on this radiance, a radiant glow, and all the markings of the chickenpox seemed to disappear. So in other words, she was beautified by God. And when we make the effort to know our faith, to live our faith to the best of our abilities, we are beautified. We may not be physically healed as people were healed at the preaching of Philip, but we have interior healing because all of us have some baggage, some, some you know, uh, disorder, in, let's just say internal discern, disorder, whether it's psychological or some inclination to sin or some attachment to sin. So when we live our faith, when we take it seriously, we are healed of these disorders and also the evil spirits. They flee from us. We are protected against the evil spirits. So let us imitate Saint Kateri Titekwitha uh, as we celebrate her feast day. And she is uh, definitely a Canadian saint, so let us ask her to, to intercede on our behalf.